Season 5 of Diablo 4 is right around the corner, and the PTR is actually starting tomorrow on the 25th, and this will run all the way until July 2nd. Now with me here today, I have the Season 5 PTR patch notes, and these patch notes are extremely, extremely long, pages upon pages. And so today, we're going to break these down to figure out what's happening to your favorite classes so you guys can play the PTR. Now keep in mind, these patch notes will be translated to Season 5 in some sense. So what I mean there is... These are obviously subject to change throughout the PTR. These are changes the devs would like to make to see how they affect the game. If they do well, then they will make it into Season 5. So these are changes we could see in the actual official Season 5 launch. So with that, let's jump right into it and break down all of the changes. Here we are at the beginning of the patch notes, and we're going to read through this, and we're not going to cover everything in detail with these patch notes, but we're going to be breaking down the biggest things that are happening for Season 5. So with that, let's get started with our new items and tempering recipes. So firstly, we have some new tempering recipes. Now these really aren't all that special, but they will be nice to have in the game. Now our first new item, we have Barbarian, our, new, our unique item, Unbroken Chain Amulet. Casting Steel Grass reduces Iron Maelstrom's cooldown by five to 10 seconds. Enemies damaged by Iron Maelstrom deal 15 to 30% less damage for six seconds. Overall, a really good unique that I think will be really, really cool. Um, again, we're not going to read through all these. We're just going to tr try and cover the bigger ones. What's really going to make an impact in the game? Because it would take forever to go through these entire patch notes. This is a lot. So we're going to skip through here. Uh, Druid had a little bit going on. We're going to touch on their uh, unique item here, these unique gloves. Cataclysm is now guaranteed to strike anything in range, and you deal 40 to 80%. So obviously, we'll deal 80%. Increased damage for the duration of the effect. And this is while Cataclysm active, you gain unlimited spirit. Um, this one, I think, is a little bit more potentially impactful to Druid than, for instance, our Barbarian Unique. Um, and we'll just have to see how this actually plays in the PTR. Necromancer, my personal favorite, and the one we are going to be playing first in the PTR. Unique item, Path of Tragul. Now, if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, devs, but it's I did my best. Now, these are unique boots. Bone Prison bone prison excuse me traps a larger area and fires 20 to 35 bone splinters at enemies trapped within increase your maximum essence by two for eight seconds each time these bone splinters hit an enemy this one's interesting um bone splinters can definitely be strong and we use bone prison for several different builds um especially in other seasons like when we had the hearts bone prison was extremely, extremely strong um this is interesting. I definitely could see a few ideas here to play out with a bone build. Um, right now, bone builds aren't as hot as, you know, the summon builds, but it'll, it'll definitely be something to try. It'll, I'm, I'm intrigued. We'll, we'll keep it that way. Now, as far as legendary aspects go, nothing crazy. Um, one thing we are going to see with Necromancer this season, they're putting a big emphasis on movement speed. Um, we're going to see later on that there are several things increasing our movement speed. So like one of the bigger things here, we have Aspect of Unholy Tether Mobility. 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 We're going to see they really want our Necromancers to have a lot of movement speed. And it's interesting. Usually that's the class that is the slowest. They don't really give us a ton of options to really increase our movement speed. But it seems like in this PTR and hopefully in Season 5, that's going to change. So casting Golem's active skill creates a bond between you for 6 seconds. While the bond is active, both of you are unhindered and gain 40% movement speed now this is a lot 40 percent is basically unheard of for necromancers now next we have a really interesting one now this is a change to sever which sever is very very popular right now sever now dashes you forward to attack instead so you'll no longer be sending a like a shadow clone basically to go and attack it's actually going to be you moving yourself in space in a quick attack to do the slash now, it becomes a mobility skill and costs no essence. Now, that is that's going to be very, very interesting because this is going to change a lot of our sever. Builds will no longer be able to spam sever to do crazy amounts of stacking damage like we were. And it now has a 22 to 7, so we can get it all the way down to 7 second cooldown. This is going to change a lot. I, Me personally, I really, really like sever builds because of the just stacking shadow damage potential that you can get where you can drop blights with sever and then you have that stacking just building up just ring up damage with sever it's one of my most favorite builds in the game so i don't know how to feel about this change i mean it's definitely something we want to try out and see how it actually feels in the game but overall i'm hesitant 
Now next we have the aspect of Creeping Mist, another mobility, and we gain 20 to 35% evade cooldown reduction. You can now evade during Blood Mist, travel twice as far, entering or exiting Blood Mist resets your evade cooldown. So again, more movement, more evades, so we can travel twice as far, um, we get more evade cooldown when we're entering or exiting. Overall, I think this is a good change. Blood Mist isn't used as much as it used to, but it's still definitely very, very strong, especially for survivability if you're on a hardcore character. So this could be really, really good, especially for those hardcore characters. Now, next with Rogue, there were a few things that are kind of interesting. Now, we're not going to read all of these changes. Sorry, Rogue. I know we did for Necromancer, but that's my favorite. So we're going to. But with Rogue, there was something a little interesting, and that is this Healing Potion grants 35 to 50% movement speed for three seconds. Then after moving 30 meters, you spawn a healing potion. So I think what's going to happen here in season five is if you're on a rogue, you're kind of going to be using your potions a lot. I think it's going to be pretty integrated into how you play. And that'll be an interesting mechanic to navigate as rogue, basically buffing yourself with these healing potions and using everything to get your movement speed. And then once your movement speed, you're moving and you're spawning more of them. And it's just kind of this this looping gameplay loop that I think will be really interesting to try out. And I'm curious, I think this is a good change. Potentially we'll see how, what this is gonna affect and how it's going to do, but overall I'm excited for this change. Now Sorcerer, our new unique item that has a lot of people talking. This is the Axial Conduit, and these are pants. And it reads, Chain Lightning alternates between orbiting you and seeking up to three enemies. When it returns, it drains six mana from you for each active Chain Lightning. After you drain 66 total mana, the bolt explodes for anywhere from 270 to 570% lightning damage. Now the chain lightning expires if you don't have enough mana for it to drain. This is interesting because this is going to change how we have to work with our mana, especially on a sorcerer. Right now, everything is about is reducing mana cost. But from my understanding, Reducing the mana cost will not work with this unique pants. We're going to have to actually build up how we build mana and make sure that we have a ton of mana regeneration because this item will not work unless you drain 66. And if you want to be doing this a lot, all the time, you're going to need to be regenerating the 66 mana all the time. And so this is a little interesting. I think these can be, <laughs> I think these are going to be extremely, extremely strong and probably the unique to go for for Sorcerer, at least at the start and maybe, you know, Things will happen, it's not that good, but this 570%, just with the stacking that we can already do on Sorcerer with Chain Lightning and then this on top of it, I think Sorcerers are going to be extremely, extremely strong going into Season 5. And I'm definitely going to be trying out Sorcerer probably second in the PTR directly after my Necromancer. Now another thing to keep in mind is it looks like we're getting more movement speed on Sorcerer as well, which I am all for. You know, Necromancer and Sorcerer are the two slowest classes in the game, and I'm definitely up for more movement speed. It just makes the game feel better. When you're super slow and running around, you just feel sluggish, it gets boring. So I'm all for these increases in movement speed, and I'm glad they're finally doing something about it in the game. Now we have some balance updates. Again, we're going to touch on these on the bigger things, try and cover everything that's important. Uh, probably going to do a little bit deeper dive into Necromancer, since that's kind of what we main around here but we will be covering all of the classes. Now, starting with Barbarian and our skills getting adjusted. Uh, the first one we have Bash getting adjusted, and this is adjusted functionality. After bashing four enemies, your next bash will clobber. And the clobber basically stuns. Uh, you, cl you clobber twice as often using two-handed weapon. Um, I think a good change in general. Uh, besides that, everything looks pretty normal. Enhanced Flay, vulnerability duration increased from three to five seconds. Combat Flay damage reduction re increased from 3 to 4%. Maximum stacks increased from 4 to 5 And buff duration increased from 3 to 6 So far, we're seeing some buffs to Barbarian, which I think are needed. Barbarian is pretty strong, though, currently in Season 4 with the right build. But I definitely can see how Barbarian needs some blanket buffs just to help them stay even when you don't have your perfect gear. Now, next, we're going to move on to Druid with some of our skills here. Landslide is going to be getting a pretty significant uh, pretty significant damage per hit increase from 35 or 37.5 to 70%. Our damage area increased and doubled the amount of pillars. So we are seeing a pretty honestly a huge increased damage for landslide. Shed it looks to be about the same so we are getting attacks on all three 
um, attacks in the three chain attack for Shred. And it looks like Druids are going to be hitting very, very hard. So here we have Pulverize getting buffed, Tornado getting buffed, Lightning Storm getting buffed, Hurricane getting massively buffed. Ravens can now be cast while moving. Poison Creeper can now be cast while moving. So movement speed and more damage. Overall, I think great for... Oh my gosh, they keep going. Look at all these buffs. So we have damage increase from one to two. Strike is doubled. Grizzly Rage. Cooldown for this ability now starts after. Um, maybe a little bit of nerf. And overall, wow, we're seeing a lot, and I mean a lot of Druid buffs. They just keep going forever. Finally, my favorite class, Necromancer. Necromancer minions can now overpower. That's big. Okay, this is going to change how we can do damage a little bit. Just overall, when we overpower ourselves, this is going to open opportunities to other legendaries that we don't usually use. I think this will be interesting to play with, seeing how much we can stack up our minion damage. Minions are now more aggressive, will automatically engage nearby enemies. Okay, I don't know how to feel about this. This could be extremely annoying or extremely nice. There are situations, especially in a minion build, where you are not doing very much damage yourself as the person. You might not even be doing any damage. You might just be debuffing the enemy and kind of letting your minions ramp and shred on their own. And this would be nice for builds where you don't have some way to easily aggro your minions, but this could also be very, very annoying for just going around and playing at different times. Sometimes you don't want your minions to aggro. So this, this will be an interesting change to see how the AI works. It might be a little buggy, and I'm curious about that, but overall, I have mixed feelings about this. Nothing, nothing crazy. Then we have Golem. It's an active ability. If the Golem is far from the target location, it will now leap to the target. That's nice. Iron Golem slam sized increased by 56%. So that's nice. That's actually really, really nice. So it's not a little damage increase, but overall we will see a higher damage yield from our class because we'll be hitting more people in a bigger area. Primary damage increased from 80 to 110%. Secondary damage increased from 30 to 45%. Lucky hit chance increased from 20 to 25%. Okay, Sever's getting buffed again. Now Blight is also getting buffed. It's my second favorite skill from 105 to 135% damage over time. And next we have Blood Wave. Increased damage from 150 to 450%. Now, uh, this was definitely needed. I think Blood Wave has been probably the least used skill for the entire lifespan of Diablo 4 when it comes to uh, Necromancers. So that'll be interesting to see. Maybe we can actually finally use Blood Wave for once. Especially when we can turn Blood Wave into a Shadow skill, actually. And maybe, hopefully this carries over when we transfer it to a Shadow skill. And we'll be doing a ton of Shadow Blight damage with that. Speaking of Shadow Blight, our passive got an update. Hits required reduced from 10 to 8. That is huge. We're going to be proccing this so much more often. And damage increased from 22% to 44%. Wow. These all kind of have something in common. And I think we're going to see... There's two things that are going to happen here. In Season 5, we're either going to see a much higher difficulty level of enemies. So they're going to have more health, more resistances, harder to kill. But to combat that, we're doing a lot more damage. We've seen buffs across the board. Or they're not increasing how difficult enemies are, and we're just going to absolutely annihilate, thing in the P annihilate everything in the PTR. And maybe they'll see that and make changes for Season 5, but honestly, it's hard to tell. We might just annihilate everything for Season 5 as well. Now, Hellbent Commander. So here we have the previous. So your minions deal, you know, 15, 30, and 45% increased damage when you're close to them. Now, while you control at least seven minions, they deal 10, 20, and 30 increased damage. So we do have a little bit nerf here to the Hellbent Commander, but overall, not really that bad. You know, 15% at the top end, 10% the middle range, and 5% the lower end. So not bad. Overall, we can live with that. Now, next we have the Legendary Aspects Blighted Aspects. Uh, bonus damage after triggering Shatterbrite 10 times reduced from 60 to 120 to 35 to 50. Um, I am honestly not surprised here. We can read the developer notes. But the Blighted Aspect has been a disproportionately large source of damage for Shatterbrite based necromancers, giving far more powerful, giving far more power, power, excuse me, than we normally give for a single aspect. To compensate for this change, we are increasing the baseline power of the Darkness Core skills and Shadow Blight with the goal of keeping these builds at approximately the same overall power level. 
I'm not surprised by this. With the increases to Shadow Blight and the uh, Darkness skills, if they left this the same, no one would run any other class. It would be every single person in Diablo would be a Shadow Blight Necromancer running the Blighted Aspect, and we would just absolutely wreck everything. So this kind of has to be changed. The amount it was changed from 50% from, well, I guess 120 to 50% is quite large, but considering the percentage increases we got in the buffs earlier on, it's not too surprising. And I think we'll end up at about the same area we were. And so we'll just have to see how that works. Aspect of bursting bones, bone prison burst damage increased from around 12.2% to 120% of weapon damage. Interesting, we're seeing a little bit push on the bones builds again. I think bone builds will be definitely more prevalent in season five, but obviously we'll have to see. Then we have the Empowering Reaper, chance to sever to create blights. So, okay, we're going to have more blights. And the blight bonus damage from 100 to 120. So another nice little buff probably to help counteract this nerf. And overall, I think we'll end up doing more damage as a Shadow Blight Reaper. I think they're just repositioning that damage into different things. Now, Grasping Veins is another really important one. Critical uh, strike chance after casting reduced from 25 to 20. Overall, not a huge nerf, but still a nerf. Uh, to damaged reduced from 50 to okay so grasping veins got nerfed again which i'm not surprised this was one of probably the most used aspects on necromancers so it was kind of due for a nerf in my opinion now down here at our unique changes there are a few interesting ones um ring of uh Mendelin. lucky hit chance affix replaced with summoning skill damage overall Interesting. Um, don't know how to feel with this. I don't know if this will be a DPS increase or a DPS loss. We'll have to do some testing in the PTR to actually see the percentages and what this is actually going to do for us on the Ring of Mendelin. I'm very curious to see this fully. The, I, to my understanding, this might actually be a DPS increase, but it's hard to know with just how bland these are. Now, another thing here with our Death Speakers Pendant, summoning skill damage affix replaced with movement speed. So again, we're seeing another push on Necro for moving faster, which I'm all for at, in all honesty. Now, Rogue has a lot of these same things happening, basically buffing the individual skills and passives and slightly nerfing a few of the actual aspects. As you can see here, there's a lot of changes. We're not going to go through them all here because this video is already getting kind of long. So as we can look through here, we can see some of our key passive getting changed, the legendary aspects. There's a lot going on here. And if you want, let me know down in the comments below if you want an individual video for all these changes, because there's enough content here just for individual videos for each of the classes, Barbarian, Necromancer, Sorcerer. We haven't even gotten to Sorcerer yet. There is so much information here, and I do plan to break these down more. But let me know in the comments down below which classes you'd like to see first. Obviously, Necromancer is going to get an in-depth one. So a Sorcerer, probably Rogue, then Barbarian. But if you want a different order, let me know down below. Now, Sorcerer, we can see here another kind of same thing where our skills are getting uh, damage increased. And my guess, I haven't looked yet, but I'm guessing our aspects are going to get knocked down a little bit. This is here pretty much buffs across the board. And as we can see here with Sorcerer, it's pretty much buffs across the board. Now, there's so much information here. I can't dive into these because this video is already over 20 minutes long. So we need to take a break. And I will be working on individual class guides for, PT, for the PTR to show you guys what's changing in your specific class. And that way I can go in depth without making a three hour video. So thank you everybody for watching. Keep in mind, those guides will be coming out probably in the next two to three days um, for each class. Going to probably start with maybe Sorcerer, um, then Rogue or Necromancer and break down to the other classes in whatever order you guys really decide down below. So with that, thank you everybody for watching. I will be playing the PTR I'm starting tomorrow. I don't think I will have any stream scheduled, but I will be making content for it as well. Um, there will be a few days break. I'll be leaving on vacation pretty soon, so there will be a little bit where I won't be posting. But overall, we are back on the Diablo 4 grind, and we are going to be providing you content for everything you need to know. So please keep that in mind. If you liked the video, please do like and subscribe. I appreciate all of you for watching. Thank you, and I hope to see you guys in a future video.